built a diehard following as a champion for libertarianism. He's run for president twice, and today he announced he's headed down that road again. Just hours ago, Congressman Paul formally declared he's forming a presidential exploratory committee. I talked to him this afternoon about his run and about his new book, Liberty Defined, 50 Essential Issues That Affect Our Freedom. Surprisingly, he told me Republicans are wary of running against President Obama because of his popularity. Why are so many Republicans apparently hesitant to get into this race? For, for, from Haley Barber to, to Senator Thune to, to Mike Pence, strong candidates with, with ideologies that are well-defined, a president who is below 50 in the approval ratings, which is sort of the normal threshold for vulnerability. Why, why aren't more Republicans mm -hmm. getting in? Well, well, I don't know. Um, they may be thinking they have to be cautious, and maybe they believe the president is stronger than some of the polls show. Mm -hmm. and, and the president is liked a lot. And, you know, in politics, being liked is very yep. important. So maybe they don't think he's as vulnerable as the polls indicate he might be. So uh, I, I think they're just being cautious. Look, let me switch gears on you. You have said in a fair number of interviews that one of the reasons that you vote against so many of the programs that are funded by government is that they're unconstitutional. And I don't want to do a seminar on constitutional law now, but I want to check off a couple of these programs and say, look, are these the ones you're talking about? Is Social Security unconstitutional? Yes. You think it is unconstitutional? Oh, yeah, sure. Where, 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 where is well, the authority? I mean, well, the question is, where, where is the authority? Well, I mean, look, I actually, you know, you'll be happy to know. Does, this does is, it word say Social Security? Well, this Security? is a copy of the Constitution <laughs> given to me by the Cato Institution, you know, which is uh, more ideologically aligned with you. I mean, there are the Necessary and Proper Clause, which talks about Congress shall make all laws necessary and proper for to pursue the general welfare. No. No, well, I, mean, I think it's right here. It's right okay. here in black. I mean, but th where that's is the it? It's at the end of Article One, Section Eight. Well, but wait and, and Article One, Section Eight lists twenty-two things that you can do, and anything necessary and proper to fulfill those authorities, right. you're allowed to do it. So it's there. And the General Welfare Clause is a gross distortion. I mean, you can do anything. Why, Why did they have the Ninth and Tenth Amendment if the General Welfare says you can well, set wait, up wait, uh, wait, social wait, wait, insurance? Wait, wait. I took my glasses on to read the Constitution, at least the Cato Institute version. Yeah, okay. so, See, Prince too small. Yeah. You're not saying the Ninth and Tenth Amendment make Social Security unconstitutional, are you? No, I'm saying it's unconstitutional because we didn't have an authority, and anything you don't have an authority to, you're well, not but, allowed to do. That's what the Ninth and Tenth yeah, Amendment yeah, say. Well, and they also has to do with states' rights, but I, I don't understand here. I mean, it, it says, Congress shall power to lay and collect taxes, duties, impose ex excises, to pay the debts, and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. I think the general welfare is saying maybe having an honest currency, maybe having a uh, uh, you know, well, free markets and property rights. That's general. But when you, what you're talking about on general uh, welfare uh, is specific welfare. If you take mm. care of the elderly at the expense of the poor, okay. that's not general. That's well, specific. It's well, a transfer okay, of wealth. Okay. Anything that, that, that transfer of wealth. Look, look Congress, that, that's a little metaphysical for me because I think what we're talking about but is, it's is, real, is the it's entirety enough. of our senior citizens. Okay, so look. But it doesn't okay. work so, either. So, social, security, work. social Security, you think, well, okay, it's a separate conversation. I disagree. <laughs> social Security, you think, is unconstitutional. That's Absolutely. Okay, Medicare. Sure. It's the same same argument. There's nothing in here that provides. You got to have an explicit authority, otherwise you're not allowed to do it. That's what how, it says. How explicit? Okay. The Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. I gather then you're saying all of them are unconstitutional. I, I do. I think most of the public is going to be rather astonished to hear you think that, that Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are all unconstitutional. Technically speaking, they're unconstitutional. So if you were president, you would not put them in your budget. Well, I think what I would do is propose a transition time. I would uh, okay. give the young people, and they're overwhelmingly in support of my suggestion, that if you're young and you're getting out of college and starting a workforce, right. opt out. They want to opt out of Obamacare, I'd let them opt out and not have to pay any of the tax. Okay. And Free I would choices. let people over 50, I think we should okay. work very hard to try to fulfill our promises, which means we have to cut elsewhere. We spend $1.2 trillion overseas. We can save a lot of money there. We don't have to put any. See, your inference is that, oh, you're against Medicare, and Medicaid, you're going to throw them all out in the street. No, That's no, how no, you're no, going to no, no, balance no, 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 the budget. No, no, but there uh, is a transition look, look, that you can work look, on. I'm, not, I'm uh, trying not to, to create a caricature of your view. Trust me, I, I understand there are many changes that have to be made and understand the subtlety of your view, which is there are alternatives that can be provided elsewhere. Let, let, let's move on. Again, I disagree with you, but I, I just want to understand the intellectual parameters. And I've always said you have an intell intellectually coherent view that deserves to be respected and heard. Your, your new book, 
Liberty Defined, fascinating. You begin your book, it's on the very first page. I read beyond this, but I just want to uh, quote this because it's, it's the sort of intellectual foundation for, for your worldview. You say, liberty means to exercise human rights in any manner a person chooses so long as it does not interfere with the exercise of the rights of others, which is sort of a classical liberal view, in, 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 liberal philosophy, John Stuart Mill, the notion of right. self-regarding acts. That's right. what he called them. But here's the question I've got for you. The reason this has fallen out of favor is because people have said, conceptually, of course, that's right. But do they exist? In other words, if somebody builds a coal-driven energy plant two miles away from the property you own, right, and spews out all sorts of pollution, do they have the right to do that, or does that infringe on your, on your, your, your liberty? Absolutely no right to do it. You so, know, freedom and property rights will take care of the environmental problems because your neighbor can't come and dump his garbage in your yard. He can't destroy your water coming into your land. He can't dump so, sewer in your air. So you don't have a right, right to okay. do that under uh, property rights and free markets. So, so you, right. So you agree that there are interactions between what people do on their own property and others surrounding them that limit this notion of liberty as you acknowledge it. Well, yeah, I don't think you're limiting liberty. You're limiting people who are destroying your property okay. or destroying okay. now, your liberty. Now, doesn't mean that I can hurt you. Okay. So this is limiting uh, their ability and, and to hurt people. people then when they get together to define the rules by which the other person can hurt you, to use your phrase, isn't that what government does? Yes, and, and very poorly because in economic sense what they do is they act with prior restraint. You're not allowed, we're not well, allowed to use prior restraint to restrain you on what you do on your TV programs. But people First think Amendment that, is different. But, but, but people think on economics it's different. Well, and I say ask, economics and personal liberty are one in the well, same. Let me continue this analogy. Let's say we know that the coal plant is going to spew up all that pollution. It's going to make the air here in New York City dirty and foul, cause asthma, all sorts of diseases. So we pass something called the Clean Air Act. It says power plants in the Midwest or down in North Carolina have to put in a certain type of technology to limit that pollution, good or bad under your theory? Well, that's through a bureauc bureaucracy and Conceptually and good or bad? Uh, the, the method is bad they, the because concept, you, can achieve, you, can, right? you, can, you can achieve it with free markets. No, you can't. I, lived, how, I, was how, raised, I was raised in... How, in, how do you achieve it through, through, through free markets? Because you go to court and you say oh, so you so can't do it. And after tort, you, do it. You, you, and there is tort law. And when you find out that you're liable for oh, putting garbage in somebody else's yard, they don't do it. But that wait, but wait a minute. What you're saying is the, the the notion of having the people here in New York sue the power plants in North Carolina, wherever it may be, because of that. The pollution here causes asthma and all the stuff. You like that notion. What you quibble with is having the EPA do it or having private yeah, lawyers, and you'd they, rather have private lawyers. They, no, not really. You, did, but, you just said that. You but, said that's how the uh, private market does it. Let me get, you just let said me get, a, let me get a word in. <laughs> uh, I was raised in Pittsburgh, and yeah. it was black skies during, right. during the 40s. And it was all cleaned up before the EPA because of local property rights and city ordinance. They said, you can't do it anymore. The rivers were polluted. They were cleaned up before the federal government ever got involved. No, no. First of all, that's not the case. And I can tell you that because you look at the history of the Clean Air Act, and I'm the one who brought the lawsuits. But here's the problem. Do you know how it was cleaned up? By building smokestacks that were 1,000 feet tall. So what did that do? It sent the pollution not down into Pittsburgh, but over to New Jersey oh. and New York. And so you shifted the burden. And the reason that the EPA was created, the reason the Clean Air Act was passed, was to deal with the very issue of okay, liberty why, you're dealing with. Why should, so you, have two, so are you, why should you have two sets of rules? One, prior restraint on every economic matter, but I'm not allowed to have prior restraint on your TV because program. It's the same principle. No, 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 Congressman, look, the First Amendment is different. We all appreciate that. Speech is something sacrosanct. See, we, we as freedom lovers don't see the difference. We believe that individuals' property rights are the same as speech rights. You can't have two kinds of rights. This is what happened. But you endorse the no. status quo of all the conservative and liberal arguments no. today because you think there's economic rights over here and First political all, rights over here. Anyway, let, let's switch gears. Why are you running? Yeah, I want you to have your fair shot explaining to the public why you should be the president of the United I States. I am determined to counteract many of the fallacies that you have just <laughs> stated. That is my goal in life All right. because you speak for the status quo so clearly that I, you motivate you know me. I say, the, there is our problem. The, the, the notion that I'm viewed as the status quo, the folks out there think I'm anything but that. But anyway, Congressman, <laughs> it is always a joy to have you here in intellectual sparring uh, session. And thank you so much and congratulations and good All luck. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
You know, I got to say, it's always fun to talk to Congressman Paul. And then if you'd like to read an excerpt of Congressman Paul's new book, go to our blog, CNN.com slash in the arena. Next, meet the Muslim extremist planning to disrupt Friday's royal wedding. You got to see this guy.